what can they expect when they see the film? This is classic Guy Ritchie and some of his best as well. So it's a World War II action adventure in Guy Ritchie style. And I think people are going to love it. Uh, we have a shorthand now at this stage. And I seem to understand what he needs um, on a daily, pro daily basis. It, he's very much a free creative. And so he'll say, right, try this, try that. We're all coming up with ideas. And Guy and I know how to do that with each other. He'll throw a monologue at me from time to time, uh, which I'm now used to. So I won't be pulling my hair out when he does. And uh, that's why we work well together. It's a cinema experience. And I think for a while now, we've been missing that. And I, there's been some really big movies in the past, what is it, nine, ten months. And that's just proof enough that we need to be getting back into the cinema. People do enjoy the cinema. We just It's easy to forget because we got so comfortable sitting at home. But it's, uh, it's time to get back there. I just love being um, on the edge of my seat. I love having sort of a mystery to solve. You know, mysteries are, you know, my favorite genre of books, of literature. So uh, I, I just love being transported into a world that feels so unrealistic and un, um, common to me. Um, it's, it's just, it's thrilling. Well, I get a chance to play something I've never played before. I've never been a scene like this before. I've never um, had the challenge of sort of leading a cast with two very young performers and having to sort of shepherd us all along through this story. So I saw it as a wild challenge. And I love this sort of psychological aspects of it, the generational trauma aspect of it, I think is really interesting to me. I hope they'll feel like it's something they've never seen before. This is a very odd family in a very odd situation that we haven't quite seen before. I think you have the usual scares, you know, the things that keep us on the edge of our seat. Um, we walk that line of reality and non-reality and what's real and what's not real, and I think that's sort of the terrifying aspect of it. And I hope they'll feel like they saw this beautiful, scary nightmare. That's how I like to call it. I think, you know, we need to get back to the movie theaters. We all know as an industry, we've all been through so much. Mm -hmm. And our streamers are great. Watching it at home with our, you know, our kids and popcorn and getting up and, you know, coming back is great. But there's still nothing like seeing something on a big screen um, and sharing the common experience with other people and showing movies the way filmmakers intend for us to see them. So. You know, I, I really just, uh, I've been doing some more dramatic work recently. I really wanted to do a comedy, and I wanted to do one with Seth, and 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 to get to do it with Keanu and Kiki Palmer and Sandra, and all, all this, this amazing cast we had. It, it was it was a blast. Seth, I've just known for so long, and and we just have a fun uh, rapport together, and and love working together, and 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 then you know when we had the idea of Keanu playing this angel part and, and that coming together, it was it's truly magical. And then all these other pieces. Uh, fell into place with Kiki and Sandra Oh and, and uh, yeah, so it all came together. It's Keanu, because he's so funny, he kills so hard, and I think there's so many people that know him from Matrix and John Wick, like a whole generation that haven't seen him do comedy like this, and he, you know, he's like very quiet and great in, in John Wick, but this he's speaking all the time, and he's just killing, and he's so funny, and him playing an angel just seems like how... <laughs> <laughs> Has this not happened before? I don't buy into this idea that people don't want to go to the theater to see comedy. I don't think we can let the whole genre go away. I mean, there, there's only been like four that have been released since the pandemic, and, and one of them made like a billion dollars. I think people want to go, and I think um, we have a really exciting opportunity because you know Lionsgate really got behind us and behind this idea, which I think is a fun idea, original and, and, and funny, and I think we have a special movie that I hope people enjoy in theaters. Well, I'm a fan of the games, and more than that, a huge fan of science fiction movies, but fun, big, crazy sci-fi movies. Movies like Fifth Element and fun action films like Raiders of the Lost Ark and wild movies like Escape from New York. So um, to have the chance to kind of blend all of those elements, a little bit of Mad Max, a little bit of Star Wars into this fantastic universe, I, I jumped at the chance. Well, one of the first things I did was I talked to Randy Pitchford, the game creator, and I said, I want to do an adaptation. I want to make sure that we're in the world of Borderlands, but first and foremost, we're making a great movie. And if people play the game, they're going to love it, but if you've never played the game, you're going to love the movie. So as someone who knew the game but wasn't intimately familiar, I could focus on making a great movie, and Randy was with me every step of the way. I wanted to make sure I wasn't breaking the rules of the universe, but if I wanted to adapt something, 
then he was like, oh, go for it. The games are the games and the movies are the movies. So he really gave me the freedom to make a great film. And if I wanted to change things and adapt them, it wasn't a problem. I was most excited to obviously work with Kate Blanchett. I mean, she's incredible. And we had the, mo we had the best time working together on House of the Clock and its Walls. Um, so as soon as I had Kate, I knew I had a chance to get Jack Black to play Claptrap. Once you have Kate Blanchett, it's easy because Kate comes on and everybody wants to be in the scenes with Kate. So then Jamie Lee Curtis signed up, Kevin Hart, and then Florian Montenau, and then, you know, just the discovery of this century, which was Ariana Greenblatt, um, pre-Barbie. So she, she came and she just rocked it in the audition, and I knew she was going to be perfect. And, uh, you know, as soon as we saw them all together, we all just started laughing, and that's always a great sign. I wanted something that was beautiful and wild and fun and colorful, a mix of Fifth Element, a mix of Barbarella, a mix of Mad Max, a mix of Star Wars, Escape from New York. I wanted something that was visually spectacular and fun from start to finish. I wanted the tone of a movie. I didn't want to make the you know, heavy, oppressive, serious sci-fi. I wanted you just grab your bucket of popcorn and have a great time at the movies. The movie is loaded with Easter eggs. We made sure we did that. And Randy Pitchford told me every time you put a number or a code or a number on a door, it's going to have some significance. So we really, really work closely with Gearbox and our art department to lay Easter eggs in and certain characters, references, clothing. If you play the games, you'll see them all over. Every scene we looked at it and go, where can we lay in Easter eggs? I love Easter eggs. So we had a great time with that. Tiny Tina was such a trip to play. I think I played a bunch of the video game and I watched all the clips. And I think I watched a lot of gamers talking about the movie and their opinion on Tina. Um, and also my brother's a big gamer, his friends are big gamers, so I asked what is necessary to bring to Tina. Um, and I kind of went off of that. You know, doing a movie rendition, you have to kind of bring your own flair to the character and bring some humanity, so I definitely incorporated some of that. But I kept her as true as I possibly could, and yeah. I think definitely kind of just like the physical transformation I went for with the hair and the costume and even the voice, different like fluctuations I would do. I love looking as different as possible for characters, so that was definitely fun. Um, and also just working with Eli and collaborating him with him with the character was like so fun every day. We genuinely became like a family. I know everyone says that, but this one it was so true. Um, and every day was so fun. I mean, Kate and Jamie just working with them and learning from them was such an honor. So. Because it's so fun and it's energetic and I think it's one you can go watch with all of your friends and all of your family. Um, and it's such a popcorn movie. You sit and you have fun and there's good music and there's good colors and you know, you're going to laugh and you're going to be intrigued on the edge of your seat. So it has all the pluses to go to the theaters for sure.